all I could hear was religious radio and preachers. And all they were doing was talking about the end of the world. Imagine turning on BBC and all you can hear is someone telling you about the devil. Hi, we're Bombay Bicycle Club. We're at Diffuse and we're going to talk about our new album, My Big Day. What music do you listen to on long drives? I have to admit, I'm playing more of my Nintendo Switch than I'm listening to music. <laughs> Uh, I've been listening to a lot of classical music on long, like on the long train journeys. Uh, there's a piece by Mahler, his Fourth Symphony. Uh, Seren actually played that in the orchestra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were that yeah, way. that was the yeah, first yeah, time yeah. I heard it. Was Seren? He plays uh, orchestral percussion. Mm. Uh, so he introduced me to this piece. Mm. I'm listening quite a lot to this. I think he's a producer called Salt S A U L T. I don't think he's very new, but he's quite new to me. How come this album is more experimental? I think it, it wasn't like a conscious decision. We didn't sit down together and say, hey, should we try and be more experimental? Since we all took a break a few years ago and did our solo projects and stuff, I think we all just explored different types of music and especially me doing a solo project where I was making more like electronic and hip hop influenced music. I think that just naturally found its way onto the record. And then I think collaborating as well with lots of different artists on this album has probably helped it sound a little bit different to what we usually do, but that's exactly what we wanted, you know. Each of our albums kind of has become a little bit more experimental, mm -hmm. I would say. And yes, yeah, so I feel like this one is kind of like, almost like an amalgamation of, of all our previous albums. How did the song Rural Radio Predicts the Rapture come about? The so Rural Radio started from a sample and it's a piece of classical music uh, by a composer called Paul Ducat. And um, I heard it and just thought it would it would be the foundation for a really interesting song. So I, I sampled it and put some drums and bass over it. It's a good testament to where we're at right now mentally, because maybe 10 years ago, I feel like we would be a bit hesitant to put it on a Bombay album. We might be a bit nervous about what people thought or does it fit? And I think now the more we do this and the more experience we have, we're just saying, you know what, if we like it, then hopefully our fans will like it too. So let's not patronize them. The worst thing you can do as a band when you've made six or seven albums is just keep repeating the same thing. I think you have to evolve or die. Like you, if you're going to do the same thing, then you might as well just stop. The title comes from me playing a computer game and it's called Microsoft Flight Simulator. And basically you become a pilot. And I was flying over Nebraska, which is a state in the middle of America. It's very you know, quiet state, not much going on. And on the radio, all I could hear was like religious radio and preachers. And all they were doing was talking about the end of the world. And it was such a foreign thing to me. Like imagine turning on BBC and all you can hear is someone telling you about the devil. And I thought it was fascinating. So I thought I'd write some music about it. Why did you choose to include more features? I think it was probably a result of me having done my solo project where I had lots of features and I just enjoyed it so much and I, I started to think why don't bands do it as often as you know electronic music or hip-hop or pop music especially now I think after the pandemic it's so we're so used to collaborating with different people across you know different time zones and countries and it's become easier than ever to to make music together even if you don't live in the same city and when you're writing a song it's just amazing to have this imagination and think oh wouldn't this person sound so cool on it i mean it kind of varied like from song to song something like um uh diving which uh holly holmstein is singing on uh it, it felt like the song had been like almost complete for like quite a while but like didn't quite feel complete and then it was only like once we asked holly to sing on it that then it just kind of all seemed to like fall into place how did the collaboration with damon alburn come about i actually just went to see him because I wanted to play him the album and I wanted to hear his opinion. And I played him this one song, Heaven, and uh, he just said, he just passed me a microphone and he just started singing. And that was his like opinion of the song is that you should have me singing on it. So. Why did you choose to self-produce this record? I think we realized that no one is like as tough on ourselves as we are. So we can work with a producer, but They don't have as much at stake as we do, like if it's our own band. And we spend weeks and weeks and months and months just making a song the very best that it can be. When you work with another producer, you don't have as much time. You've got like a couple of weeks, maybe a month, and then it's finished. Last album, we took a very different approach. And we were like very 
excited about kind of going away. So we went to LA and like recorded it in LA with, with an, another producer. And yeah, as Jack said, I, I think we basically realized that like, um, we're our own best critic. What's your songwriting process like? As Jack sending along ideas, um, the rest of us will just give feedback basically. And from so many years of working together, I think Jack's developed quite a thick skin. We're like, we don't have to sort of like tiptoe around each other. We can just be very honest with each other about whether we think something's good or not. If I send something that isn't at the right level, then immediately I'll just get some really honest feedback saying, you know what, this isn't that good. And then we can quickly move on and try and, and just keep trying until we get 12 songs that are, that are at the right level. It's harder to do that when it's four people writing together, because if, it, if you're involved so much in the writing process, you don't have that objectivity. Why is the album called My Big Day? We were looking at all the songs, seeing if there was something that, that fitted the kind of atmosphere of the album. And I think there is something quite celebratory about the music and quite optimistic and quite joyful. I think just we're at this moment now, maybe coming out of the pandemic and maybe just feeling this optimism about going back on the road and being a band together again. And yeah, it felt like a very, a very fitting title for all of that. Would you describe it as a concept album? I've never thought of it in that way no. myself. I don't think we're capable of making a concept album. We had very like one idea here, one idea there and like short attention span. And maybe at the end we kind of try and make some sense of everything. But the writing process is so all over the place that I don't think it suits us to be like, all right, what's the concept here? What are you looking forward to after the release? Sharing it with people and hearing people sing the lyrics and joining together to, 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 to listen to it at the gig. Yeah, I can't wait for that to, to happen again. It's such an important part of the, the whole process. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That we, I mean, we barely played gigs outside the, of the UK since 2014, really, because we then went on a break after 2014 and then COVID happened. Yeah, I think it's been nine years since our last gig here, mm. so it's going to be a really yeah, special crazy. one.